Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. Part 15. Fought back and returned home. We continued observing all actions of the two groups. The five men in the forest sat down under a tree. After a long consultation under the tree, they got up and walked towards the beach. They probably gave up looking for their friends, and we had to act quickly before they reached their boat. I had a plan. I told the assistant to go with Friday more to the center of the island and shout at the sailors. When the sailors heard this, they shouted back. Then they started going in the direction of the voice. Friday and the assistant continued shouting back. They started to take the sailors to the opposite side of the island. This strategy worked as I planned. The five men were soon very far from the beach. This was very good for us. We went to the three men in the boat. We explained the situation to them. They decided not to fight us. They became our prisoners too. Meanwhile, Friday and the captain's assistant returned. They left the others so far away that they wouldn't return sooner than in two hours. We hid and waited for them. When they returned, they were very tired. When the sailors came to the boat, they were amazed to find it empty. They started calling their friends, but again there was no response. After a while, the leader of the mutiny and two others separated from the rest and walked towards the forest where we were hiding. The captain and Friday attacked them as soon as they were closer to us and away from the group. The leader was killed on the spot, a second man was injured, and the third one ran back. Then we all emerged from the forest, and we ran to the boat. The captain spoke to the sailors. He asked them to give up. When the sailors understood the situation, they dropped their weapons quickly. We decided to tie the prisoners, but we didn't tie all of them. The captain trusted three of the men. We didn't tie these three men. Now, we were ten men. We started to plan how to get the ship. After some discussion, we knew what to do. Friday and I stayed on the island. We had to watch the prisoners. The captain, his assistant, and the passenger took the clothes of some of the prisoners. They wanted to look like them. Then the captain and his sailors took the boat. They went to the ship. When they were near the ship, they spoke to the men on the ship. They told them it was impossible to find the other men. When all of the men from the boat were on the ship, the captain showed himself, and the attack began. Several sailors were injured in the battle. There was only one person shot, and he was the second leader of the mutiny. As soon as the captain regained possession of the ship, he ordered seven guns to be fired, which was the signal we agreed on. I was happy to hear those shots. Soon the captain went back to the island. We hugged each other. He told me that the ship was now under my control. I was so happy. I started crying so much that I wasn't able to speak. After I calmed down a little, the captain ordered his men to bring a lot of food from the ship to the island. We were going to have a nice meal to celebrate our victory and my departure from the island. There was expensive wine, excellent tobacco, pork, beef, and peas. There were biscuits for dessert. I was very happy to taste all these things again. The captain gave me clean clothes. I didn't wear clothes for a long time. The clothes were very light. They were a little uncomfortable at first, but it was soon fine. When the meal was over, 
and I had clean clothes again. The captain and I had to discuss what to do with the five prisoners whom the captain didn't trust. The men were really horrible. He even feared sticking them on board the ship in chains. I suggested discussing the matter with them, and seeing if perhaps they would choose to stay on the island instead of going back to England, where they would face death for mutiny. We met the prisoners and explained the new situation to them. They had to choose between a death sentence in England and a life on the island. And they went for the second option. We put them in the cave. The cave was now the prison. I told them to wait for more orders. I needed some time to prepare for the journey. I had to think about what to take with me. In fact, I didn't need to take many things. I decided to take my dog, my parrot, my book, and some other small things. I also took the money, gold and silver, which I found on the ships. They were finally useful to me. I met with the prisoners one more time. I showed them my corn and my domestic animals, and told them what I discovered and what I built on the island. Then I went on board the ship. We left the island on the 19th of December. 1686. It was 27 years, two months, and 19 days since I first stood on the island. First, we went to the island where Friday's people lived. The Spanish and Portuguese sailors were very happy when they saw us. They were happy that we had a ship. Now we didn't have to build a new ship. We could go to Europe. My dog was very happy too. When he saw one of the Spanish sailors, he ran to him very quickly. He jumped on him. He was extremely happy. The Spanish sailor was his owner. He was very happy too. He started crying when he saw his dog. It was a very emotional meeting. The sailors started to prepare for a journey across the ocean. Friday has to make a decision. He could stay with his people, or he could go to Europe with me. He needed some time to think about it. We stayed on the island for one night. In the morning, I asked Friday if he made a decision. He told me that he wanted to go with me to Europe. He prepared everything for the journey. We were ready to go. We started our journey. Two months later, after a safe journey across the ocean, I stepped on English soil again. Thirty-five years passed since I left my homeland. It seems to me the whole world changed in that time. London was a different city. There were some new houses, streets, roads, shops, parks, and big bridge across the river. But it wasn't all. People also changed. They had different clothes. Women had different hairstyle. Men had different hats, and new types of guns. People used new tools, which I didn't see before. They had new names for these tools. It was all very interesting. The style of music in the pubs was also different. I heard new songs. I liked this new style. I wanted to sing these new songs. From London, I returned to my town York. My parents were both dead. I found some relatives. My sister, my uncle, and my aunt were still alive. They were happy to see me, but they thought I was long dead, so I had no rights to family's money or land. But I could stay and live in their house. England was a big shock to Friday. Everything was so new for him. He saw so many things for the first time in his life. It was all very interesting for him. He liked this new experience. What he didn't like was the cold weather in winter. It was February. Snow, ice, freezing weren't good for him. 
It wasn't logical to him why we lived in such conditions. I told him that in summer the weather was much better. I sent a letter to Brazil. I still knew the address very well. I wanted to contact people in Brazil. I wanted to know if my wife was still alive. I wanted to know if my plantation still existed, but I didn't know what to expect. The connection was broken many years ago. In May, I got a letter and some packets from my wife. She wrote she waited ten years for me. Then she stopped believing I was alive. She married again and she had a family, but her new husband died two years ago. I also got a letter from my wife's father. He took care of my plantation. In his letter, he wrote detailed calculations of the expenses and profit from the plantation during all these years. They both sent me many nice presents. They sent some nice skins and a little box full of gold. They also sent me some boxes of sugar to sell. My wife had also a big surprise for me. She wrote that I had a son. It was great news. He was born eight months after I left Brazil. He was now a big man, and he wanted to meet me. So many things happened to me in such a short time. It was shocking. I wanted to cry. Then I wanted to laugh. All the emotions were too much for me. I wasn't able to calm down. I stood up. I sat down. I stood up again. I walked around the room. I laughed. Then I cried again. When I calmed down a little, I started to think about what to do. Thank you for watching. This is the end of part fifteen, to be continued in part sixteen. If you like this story, please like, share, and subscribe. See you then.